Okay folks, welcome. So this is going to be a video on how to weather a locomotive or fish your own stock, whatever, just using rolling uh, rolling powders, just using weathering powders, a few makeup brushes and some matte varnishes. I've got rail match, humbrol, uh, I've used <coughs> loads of different brands before. I just find these two to work really well for sealing and helping with the application of the powders to the model. Let's first consider our piece. This is a Helgen class 5. Hopefully you can see that. I've framed all this so it should work. Lovely model, really finely detailed and it just wants a little bit of weather into and bring it up to, uh, I suppose you call it traffic dirty standards. Now I've looked and looked and looked and looked and looked and I cannot find a Kind of find a prototype photo of this thing. Really, really rusty and dirty and decrepit. But there are other locomotives of a similar design which I've used as inspiration for this piece. Class 5, Class 3, etc, etc, etc. So without further ado, we're going to have a crack at making it look a little bit more like a, a work tired piece of equipment. So, the powders I'm using today are the DCC Concepts powders. Now, long term viewers of the channel will know that I absolutely love using these because they're so versatile. They have a really high pigment ratio in them, so unlike some other powders, you can actually make a paint out of these, and that's something we'll also do a bit later on as well. But the first things first, what you're going to need is a little bit of card so we can mix and match up one of you. I use paper as my working zone, uh, you, you can use what you want, but I use paper because it's slightly abrasive, if you will, if that's the right word. So you can actually blend on it and then take powders from there. And da, 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 da. So, <clears throat> I'm also going to have some enamel thinners, which we have there. These are good for cleaning our brushes and making our wash with. Of course, we can also make a wash with these powders too, which works really well. So without further ado, the first, first thing we need to do is get this model matted down. There's two ways you can do it. You can either take it outside, mask up the windows, because otherwise they'll frost, and give it a couple of coats of this, let it go off. That protects the decals already on the model and the paintwork and what have you, so you're not going to damage it. Or you can use the brush on stuff if you can't get outside. I use both, uh, both work really, really well. Uh, for today's exercises, I'm just going to use this stuff and then we'll use the spray enamel to seal it in later on. And this is where you need a selection of brushes. So I've got just a few basic <coughs> makeup brushes there. Try and keep a big, fluffy, clean one for blending. We're not going to dirty this one. This is just going to be used for buffing and things, so we'll keep that to one side, keep it safe, keep it out of the way. And then we'll need a brush for applying the actual enamel thinners. So I've got this nice big fat one here. This works really well. And all I'm going to do is quite simply take a little bit on the brush. Just honestly, just on the tip there like that. That'll do nicely. Just going to start applying it to the model. Now I want to be careful here because there's loads of fine detail on this and I do not want to accidentally damage it. Now we might need to apply some more of this later on depending on the sort of effects and finishes that we're going for. But for the time being we can just sort of apply this And the brush. It is a little bit quicker to use the spray stuff, but then you've got to take it outside and mess about with it and all this. So. There we are. It's quite a, it's quite a potent substance. So make sure you've got the window open like I have. There we are. 
And what's, what this is going to do is, first of all, this will just give us a nice surface for the powders we're using to actually stick to and key to. If you try to put powders on a model that's uh, factory fresh, they will stick but will come off almost immediately. So it just pays to, as I say, get a coat of this on first. Just to give us a nice working surface reel. Unlike previous weathering videos, this one's going to be a bit more in depth, a little bit slower paced, just so you can see what's going on a bit easier. There's another part there as well. Get that balance there. I've taken the couplings off just to give it a Make it a bit easier to get to them, one of you. You don't need to take the couplings off. Just I find it makes it a lot easier for getting in there. There we are. The lack is starting to sticky up now. So we're almost ready to work with this stuff actually. And we get a little tiny bit, and I'm not using much. You know, it's just I'm literally just damping the front of the brush, and that's really it. That's all we need. You don't need loads of this stuff. If you started spraying it with the spray on stuff, it does take a bit longer to dry, but it is easier to get it all on there. So, horses for courses. Anyway, that should do for now. So, we'll let that dry just a bit more, and then we'll start by getting some, I think we'll start with a bit of roof dirt and some exhaust fumes on all of you, too. Once I put that back on there, that brush is now covered with my coat. So I'm just going to take some of our thinners, a little bit of toilet roll, and gently dab it in there. And that just stops it from ruining the brush. That's all I'm doing, just trying it off like that. Because we're going to be using that again. We'll be using that again and put that off to one side. So, when I look at the piece, you can see that actually it's starting to dry quite nicely. It's taken some of that shine off. So, the first part I'm actually going to apply is a little bit of the black. Where are we? And this is going for the exhaust soot. It's quite a small working area, so I'm going to use this little brush here. Make sure your brush is clear first. And all I'm doing, I'm not using much of this at all. So I'm just going to take a little tiny bit. And because this powder is almost fully dry, it's dry to the touch, but you can still feel it's still a little bit on the uh, on the on the sticky side slightly. And I'm only using a bit. I'm just going to dab it on, just like that. And I'm not painting with it, I'm stippling, dabbing. Yeah. And then we take our big um, smoothing brush and just sort the buff. You see there, got a tiny little bit of effect on there. And bear in mind, when we go outside and seal this properly, it is going to go down the effect quite a lot. So do bear that in mind. But I had a subscriber of mine ask how to uh, make an exhaust fume effect without a harsh line. And as you can see there, you've got a nice blend from where it's heavy to uh, <coughs> where it's still transparent. And what I'm going to try and do now is I'm just going to get my other brush, my lining brush here. And I'm just going to gently ease down. Just to give the impression that we've got some uh, some spilt diesel. And what you can do, if you want to make the streaks harsher, just 
you take something like a toothpick and just scratch away the areas you don't want to be covered. There we go. And you see the effect there. Hopefully you can see that. It's just making it a little bit more streaky to work with. So, I've got a little bit on the bonnet there to start with, that's nice. I'm going to put a little bit on the roof now. I was just using the black, but I'm not using loads of it. And again, we'll just start on the back there, around these panel lines. And again, we can always fade this out. I know it might look a little bit stark at the minute. If we get our big brush, our big blending brush, we can just do that and it smooths it down, gets the effect looking a little bit less aggressive. Now that's, I think we'll actually get a bit on these little safety valve handles here as well, just like that. Give it the impression of some built up grime and dirt. I can just gently take it back. <coughs> Hopefully you start to see it come together now. So that's all we're gonna do for the top half. Again, I don't want this thing to look absolutely rotten. Um, we're gonna look at doing a little bit of streaking down the body size now and the cab too. So we're just gonna tilt the model over a little bit. Get a little bit more of this black on the go, but this brush might be too big. So I'm going to use a smaller brush now, just gently load it up, dab off on the excess, and just get some around the hand panels there. Just gently drag that down. There we are. Get some around the door handle there. And these little rails. Thing with green as a as a colour, it's quite difficult to. What's the word I'm looking for? It's quite difficult to give the impression of any contrast because it's very close to black. Hopefully you can see this guys. Oh, just to give you an idea of what's going on with it. And again, like I say, if we think we've done a bit too much in one area, we we'll just take our toothpick and we can just trim it back a little bit. Brush. The job. Now we're going to get some dirt into these grills and panels. So again, we're we'll back with the black, and we're going to be a little more bold with it this time. I'm just going to dab it in there like that. Now I know this might look a bit overkill for the minute, but as I say, once we finish working this, 
it won't look as uh, extreme, if you will. You can just see I'm working it all into the little gaps and the nuts and the crannies and the what have you. Yeah. You see that now, it's it just looks like it's black. Take our blending brush. And you can see all the loose pounds are sort of coming off there. There we are. Much, much better. So far we've only really used the black powder. You can do quite a lot with it. It can be quite simple. You can get away with uh, quite a lot with just the black powder. Blacken this cab down a bit more actually. Lovely. Now then, let's say we want to add a little bit of contrast to this. I want to get some more colours on there. I've made a little blend here of black and grey so it's all it's like an off off black off grey colour. And we can just put that around some of the door handles again. In fact that isn't blending too well so I might just go for the actual mid grey here. Just a bit up there. And now this is sort of like a highlight, if you will. And those little door handles there. You can see just how little I'm using. Just bear in mind that any effects you put on once you seal them with the lacquer, it will dull quite a lot. So don't be too frightened of being a little bit on the bald side with it. That's nice. Just sort of see there now, getting a little bit more contrasted up. So I'm just going to do one side of the model for this video and then you can use your imaginations when I finish the other side because it'll be the same techniques just just repeated really. Okay, I'm going to get a bit on here as well. See there, look how those streaks look quite big. They look quite big on the cab folder. So, what we can do is take our toothpick, just scrape it back a little bit. blending brush and you can see now much more faded much more subtle but let's get a bit of rust on there now I think it's time for a little bit of heavy action this foot plate here is far too clean so I'm going to take the humbrol from that cart and I'm going to get my applicator brush in fact, what I might do actually is I'm just going to use the end of a combon and just dip it in slightly. 
and I'm just going to put it a little bit on there, let's go on there, let's go on there, let's go on here. Then what you want to do is you want to try and apply, in this instance, the powders when they're still a little bit, when the, uh, the Humbro varnish there is still a little bit on the, uh, the wet side. We'll use the rich old rust first. And again, just get a little bit there and just dab it on. And that's going to give us an impression of rusty panels. There we go. With our rusty panel is there. We can work that in again. We can put some more black on there to fade it out. Or we can actually put a little bit of terracotta on there. Put a bit more of the, uh, the mat coat down first. Use our small brush. Take a little bit and just stab it in there. Work it in and blend the two together. I'm sort of doing this a little bit freehand today as well, so. And that's just an idea, and we can work that more, just the same, same way as before really. Just blending different shades onto it, using more matte lacquer if we need to. We can even take bits away with our toothpick. You can get this really nice scratched and scraped look. It brings back the paint underneath it. You can even use like a little Stanley blade if you've got a Stanley blade, but you've got to be very careful. That you don't actually cut the uh, cut the model's paint away. scratching you can sort of see the effects you can get. I think I'm just going to turn that rust down just a little bit on the panel with a little bit of black. Right then, we've looked at uh, applying the powders in their uh, dusty format. What about using them as a paint? How can we make a paint out of them? Well, pretty simple, easy enough to do. That's where your cardboard comes in. Get your mixing brush again. 
get a little bit of the home roll on there. That's it. And then your enamel thinner too. Just what I call a brush full. So I'll dip the brush and then work it in. That's it. So it's, it flows nicely. And then you add your pigment or your weathering powders to that. And we're going to go for a nice, I think. Uh, yeah. I'm going to get the terracotta on there. And you'll notice when you add the powders, nice little small brush to the, uh, the wash, it slightly changes how they behave, how they look. Yeah, I'm just going to now, on the tops of the rails there. Just little tips. Like that. These little bars here. It's properly, properly versatile stuff. So, and then the edges as well. You can get the edges. Just where the burnt surface has been chipped and painted, maybe. I'm gonna do like a nice downward stroke if you can. Just gives you an idea of what might have gone on. You can add more pigment as well, get a stronger effect. The beauty is you can just tip this back as far as you want as well. And the nice thing is, but it's still wet. Get a bit more of the thinners on the brush. Add it back to that, reactivates it a bit. And then we can add different tones in. So we want to make this a little bit darker in areas. So we get the rich old rust out now. Add a little bit of that in there, mix it in. And when it's almost dry, brush this one on. Get the idea, just dip it in like that. On the side of the body there. At the bottom. Just to give it that impression of its a hard life. But not too hard a life. And I'm just gently, 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 gently dabbing it on. And this will all dry nice and matte. You've got that little effect now there. It looks quite bold at the minute, but again, we are going to turn that down. There we are. In fact, I might just start getting that little bit of that valve gear while I'm down here. Just a little bit on the valve gear there. Just a tad. And you can see now as it's drying, it's starting to mat off. And it's nowhere near as stark as it was when we first put it on there. 
I'm just going to go over some of those orange areas with a bit of this and then a little bit of the actual raw powder as well just to build up the texture just the actual raw powder there you can use a different brush for this as well if you like And you can feather it in and you can take away that harsh edge from using the, the uh, brush from before and this is how you blend it in so you've got the, you have the harsh bit from before and now as you can see it's blending it out so it's not as stark and contrasted and again, and again, when I say we're going to, when we finish with all this, a nice old rusty colour on there, it's old, it's dirty, you know, and again, we can just layer this again with a little bit of black just in the middle of it, if we want to give it something to to, to bounce back against the contrast with. So we've got a dry brush there and just a little tiny bit in the centres. And you can see now the effect we're having. Just mutes it back a little bit. This is the best bit about powders, because you can blend them on the model. Okay, I'm about happy with that side. That's looking about right now for me. Very good. Again, I want to do all these techniques on the other side as well. So there's nothing different going on for the rest of the model. I'm just showing on the one side now how it's all coming together. Hopefully you can see it all okay. I'm trying not to damage the model as I'm working on it. And there we are. I'm just going to get a bit of black on these wooden boards. That's looking nice. That's looking good. And now I'm going to try and just give the impression of a little bit of faded paint up there if I can. Now I've got the verdant moss here. It's like a, um, a, a green. Now it's going to work really well because the logo is green. If I just do this, dab it on there. So make see it look like the paint has faded. It is meant to be used as a, a moss effect. You can just use it to cheat in fade certain areas. And when I want to go mad with the fade, just certain little areas of it. We'll get some more of that as well. Fading brush there. These valances at the front could use some attention too. So a little bit of the thinners on there. Reactivate our puddle of mud, as it were, from earlier. Just around the edges. Like we did before, this is just the initial stage. Really difficult to try and show you what I'm doing and actually be able to do it at the same time. I'm just getting the edges where the paint will have flaked off, which has been hit by wagons and rolling stock and what have you. Starting up, then we get back to the old raw powders, just mix it in there, blend it out. 
Dab, 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 blend, 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 blend. And if you want to give the impression of fresh rust, just use a lighter tone. Terracotta works really well for this. And we just get a little bit in there with our small brush. Work it into the other powders that are over there. You can hopefully see the effect that's having. Giving it a nice varied look. That's looking really nice now. That's looking good. Again, we'll do the same technique with the back end as well. Hopefully, folks, you can see just how it all sort of comes together. Now, I'm going to get finally, I'm going to get a bit of dirt on the front of this grill. And I think we'll, we'll call it a day to that because this video is going on quite a while. It was just sort of to give you an idea of some of the tricks and tips you can use. So, a little bit of the for lack of a better word, the neat umbra on there, just on the grill. Now this is still wet, so we're just going to get on there. I'm going to let that go off for a minute or two. And then what I want to do is get a nice big brush and get some of the black and just dab it on the front there. Of course you want this grill to be dirty. Unapologetically dirty grill. Get a bit on the Huntlet rubber as well. Pardon me while I just make sure I'm Get that in the right place. There we are, that'll do nicely. And then, because I want this to look like it's a bit rusty, we're going to get some of the angry rust on there as well. Just a little bit at the bottom there. A little bit of the old rust in there too. There we are. Right folks, I'm going to finish weathering this and then using the same techniques and we'll show you how it looks a bit later on. Once you're finished, happy days. So here we are outside. You notice the windows are taped up now. Just going to seal it. So you notice that all the Really aggressive colours will mute down nicely, sort of blend in once we've done it. Now, the rather annoyingly today, the wind's blowing all over the shop. But you don't want to apply the powder like this, uh, apply the lacquer at point black range. You literally want almost the wind to take it. Like that. And you can see the effect that's having on the powders already. That's literally it. That's all you need to do. Just let it dry. Maybe do one more coat. That should keep it from uh, coming off in your hands.
Hi folks, hope you enjoyed that. I know it was a little bit long, but I really wanted to get through to the the basics of how long the process actually takes and the only way I could think to do that was to film the whole process near enough start to finish with almost no editing whatsoever so you didn't miss any steps or things. Um, hopefully you found the camera angles better. I know at times it got a bit bright that was because the sun came out and I had no real way to change that. I can't control the sun. It is what it is. Hope you enjoyed that. Please do like, comment and share and subscribe. All the good stuff. I'll see you soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.